Hello, I'm Kyle from Chaparral Motorsports, and today we're talking about battery maintenance 101. Here on the table in front of me, I have a slew of battery tender, battery chargers, or maintainers. Now, just about all of the chargers and maintainers currently on the market for the power sports industry are relatively similar, but they've got lots of variables that make them a little bit different from one another. Now, the first question I wanna answer is why a power sports maintainer versus an automobile maintainer? There is a big difference, really two of them, and let's get into those right now. Years ago when I was a kid and started riding motorcycles, my dad used to warn me about putting the automotive trickle charger onto a motorcycle battery. And then I didn't understand it, other than he knew what he was talking about and I was a kid, so I just listened. But what did I notice, even as a kid? I noticed that in the morning when I got out to the battery to go ahead and take those charge cables off, the battery acid in there would be bubbling. It'd be pretty much boiling inside there. And I thought that that was okay. But that is why automotive chargers are not good for power sport vehicles. These types of battery chargers, even though they're trickling that power in, have a constant rate of power that they're putting to that battery. From the time you put the clamps on the battery until the time you physically remove them. There wasn't this maintenance mode or this float state that current battery chargers do have. The other main reason an automotive battery charger is not intended for a power sports or motorcycle battery is the fact that the amount of current that they pump into a battery is way too high. A typical automotive battery charger or tender or trickle charger is gonna be putting 15 amps, 30 amps, or 50 amps of power at all times directly into the battery that it's attached to. That will absolutely blow up a power sports battery. Let's dig into it just a little bit deeper and talk about a battery's amp hour rating. That's the amount of juice that that battery is gonna be able to hold over a duration of time. Smaller car batteries or automotive batteries are gonna be about 45 amp hours. And then when you get into big diesel trucks like an F-250 or a Chevy 3500, you're looking at batteries that have an amp hour rating of 95 to like 135 amp hours. It's a huge difference. And the typical automotive charger is meant to be able to charge those batteries up at a slow rate of pace. So as I mentioned earlier, taking 15, 30, or 50 amps of power and trickling that into a battery that has a really large volume. But if you take all of that juice and try to pump that into a little teeny tiny battery that has at most a 14 or 15 amp hour life, that battery is gonna be destroyed. And that's where we get motorcycle battery maintainers or battery tenders. Now battery tender is more like the Kleenex or the Xerox of the battery maintenance world when it comes to power sports vehicles. This is a very household name, so much so that this connector right here that is really a two pin waterproof SAE connector is actually called a battery tender connector. Pretty amazing. Deltran has done a great job at putting themselves at the front of the marketplace. Why? They've made it really easy for you to maintain your battery on your power sports vehicle so that you know that it's ready to start every time you go out there and hit the button. Another reason to choose a motorcycle or power sport specific maintainer or charger is gonna be the fact that there are several requirements that a power sports battery might have. For example, are you riding an older vehicle that's a six volt vehicle? Well, you need to have a charger that's dedicated for six volts. Do you have multiple vehicles in the garage? Some are six volts, some are 12 volt. These chargers right here will give you an opportunity to select which one of those you wanna do using the same unit. Very similarly, are you running a lead acid battery or are you running a lithium ion? Those both take two separate chargers or two separate ways to charge the battery. Battery Tender has an option that allows you to do both of those. You can select whether it's lead acid or whether it's lithium ion. Now speaking of lead acid batteries, all of the battery tenders or maintainers out there are gonna be able to charge all of the different types of lead acid batteries with a single charger. Some of the most common lead acid batteries that you're gonna find out there are gonna be flooded or a traditional battery that's gonna have cells across the top that you're gonna to have to fill with acid when you get the battery. The next type of battery you might encounter is a sealed or maintenance free battery. Basically from the factory, they have filled all of those ports, they've then covered it, sealed it, and left you just a vent hose. Now that sealed battery from the factory is not to be opened at any time by the consumer. When it's dead, you recycle it and you get a new one. But you as a consumer don't have to worry about checking battery acid levels or filling it or any of the trouble that we had with those flooded or traditional lead acid batteries of the past. 
If you want to go even an easier route, you have either absorbed glass mat batteries, AGM batteries, or gel batteries. These are basically very similar. The absorbed glass mat means you basically have a fiberglass matting that's inside the battery. At the factory, this battery is filled with liquid. It gets absorbed into the glass mat. So there's not actually liquid inside there anymore. It basically turns into a solid. They then seal the battery, and that is AGM in a nutshell. Gel is very similar. The electrolyte substance that they have inside the battery is actually a gelatin. So you could literally puncture the battery with a screwdriver and nothing's gonna leak out of it. That is a great option for those of you that are doing serious off-road riding or want to mount your battery in a non-vertical position. And that about wraps up the lead acid portion of the batteries we're gonna talk about today. The other style of battery is gonna be the lithium ion. This is a brand new battery to the marketplace. Shirai was the leader. Shirai was the only manufacturer out there that was making a lithium battery for a long time. They went through a lot of trial and error, but now there's lots of different lithium batteries on the market. Battery Tender makes a lithium battery. WPS makes a lithium battery. Bike Master makes a lithium battery. There's lots out there to choose from. Now, if you are running a lithium ion battery, do not, at any circumstance, hook your standard battery tender up to that battery. It's gonna fry the circuitry and make your battery absolutely useless, and it can be dangerous. So make sure that you choose a battery charger or a battery tender that specifies that it's okay to use with a lithium ion battery. Now let's get into the chargers and maintainers themselves. What are the big differences between the maintainers and chargers here on the table in front of me? There are some key ones that you need to take a look at before making your final purchase. Now on the table in front of us, we have a 750 milliamp, an 800 milliamp, a 1.25 amp, and a four amp charger. Now what do those numbers mean? The 750 milliamp or the 800 milliamp charger is gonna be a junior charger. It's gonna be just enough to be able to top off and maintain a battery. But if your battery is dead dead, it's gonna take a really long time for one of these junior chargers to bring your battery back up to operating levels. That's where a one and a half amp or even a four amp charger is gonna allow you to do that job a lot quicker. Now let's dig into the guts of these battery maintainers or battery tenders, if you will. Now, as you might have gleaned from the name, a battery tender watches over your battery. Usually when a battery tender or maintainer sees that your battery's dropped down below 12 and a half volts, it goes ahead and kicks on. It puts some juice to the battery, and when your battery gets to about 14 and a half volts, it's gonna go ahead and cut itself off, and it goes into float or maintenance mode. It's just gonna sit there. It's gonna babysit your battery until it's ready for another charge. That process is gonna allow your battery to maintain a full charge and retain its freshness so that you know you're ready to ride when you get out there and hit that starter button. Now, what are the different levels of modes that this battery tender or a battery maintainer go through? You're gonna have the initialization. Basically, when you first plug it in, it's gonna go out, it's gonna look at your battery. It's gonna say, how much juice does this battery need? What percentage is this battery currently sitting at? It's then gonna come back with that number and tell the maintainer what it needs to do next. Most likely it's then gonna roll into what they call bulk charging. It's gonna give it the maximum amount of juice that that particular battery tender or battery charger has into that battery until that battery gets up to a certain level. Once it gets up to a certain state, it's then gonna roll off and go into absorption mode. What that means, it's gonna slow the rate of juice that it's pushing out to that battery and basically give it a small trickle of juice until it reaches that 14 and a half volt range. Once the battery reaches 14 and a half volts, the charger is going to go into what they call a float mode or a maintenance mode. It's then going to periodically check back and find the voltage of the battery. And then when it finds it needs a new charge, it's going to start that process all over again. Now, if you're curious about the detailed breakdown of each of the chargers here on the table, please subscribe to this video and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when each of those detailed breakdowns are uploaded to our channel. We're gonna open the package, we're gonna show you exactly what's in each one of these and explain why that charger is good for a specific use or purpose. Now I'd like to break away from battery tender real quick and share with you my three favorite chargers. So at home in my own garage, I have three different battery chargers. Two are battery tenders and one is a brand called Pulse Tech, the Extreme Charge. That is a phenomenal one that I'll explain here in just a second. But let me start out with the original. My original battery tender I have been using since 2003 when I picked up my Honda VTX 1300. I used that one tender exclusively swapping it from bike to bike because I've got this lovely plug. The battery tender ring terminal is what we traditionally like to call it. 
installed on each of the vehicles. So every couple days I'd unplug one and plug it into the next, then plug it into the next. And that kept the fleet of motorcycles 100% charged all the time. I had batteries, if you listen to our previous video where I talk about the battery tender ring terminal lead, I've had batteries that have gone up to seven years on the original battery. It's huge, it's almost unheard of, but I've had it happen on three different occasions. Now in 2012 or 13, I had a battery that went completely dead and I really needed to use it the next day and my local shop didn't have a battery sitting on the shelf. But what they did have was the Pulse Tech Extreme Charge. So I purchased that, I brought it home and I plugged it into the battery. The Pulse Tech battery maintainer from ChargeX sends pulses of electricity out and it actually knocks sulfation off of the battery plates. It can actually bring a battery back to life. And I've done it. That same battery that I needed had to have for that next day's ride, I put the Charge X from Pulse Tech on that battery and 24 hours later, walked out, fired up the bike, and rode it to the destination that I needed to go to. I then continued to use the Pulse Tech on that battery for the next year and a half, extending the life of that battery. Absolutely phenomenal. Now the third charger I have in my garage is, it looks just like this. It's the Battery Tender Junior, but it's selectable. You can choose lead acid or you can choose lithium ion. When I upgraded to a Shirai battery, I needed to have a battery tender that was lithium ion compatible and not wanting to just add a single tender to the mix that would be use specific only for that one type of battery. I chose the battery tender junior selectable that allowed me to choose between lead acid or lithium. So now I can take one charger and have any of the bikes covered. Well, that about wraps up our battery tender or maintainer 101 here from Chaparral Motorsports. I hope this wasn't too long and I hope that you enjoyed some of the specs and the details that we threw into this one, helping to explain why a power sports battery maintainer or battery tender is the best way to go if you've got a motorcycle or power sport vehicle in your garage. I'm Kyle Bratch from Chaparral Motorsports. If you like what you saw today, please give us that thumbs up. And if you want to have more information like this directly into your inbox, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be part of the notification squad. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, take care and ride safe.